Hey guys, it's Brent with Likens Motorsports. Um, as I promised last week, we're we're going to do a video on um, two different Ford blocks that we have in the house. So um, one is a Dart, one is a World Products block. Um, two uh, completely different builds. So we'll just go ahead and jump right into this block. This is um, Mr. Ron's Dart block. It's an SHP uh, 8200 deck uh, large bore. So um, 8200 deck means it's for like a 302, 289, 331, 347, 363, that deal. Um, the large bore, so if you have a four inch standard bore, then that would be more for your factory displacements. The larger bore, it's a 4125. So that enables you to get a lot more cubic inches than with a factory bore size. Um, I think Dart says the maximum that you can go is like a 4185 bore. So you can actually get into some pretty large displacements with this block. I think a three and a half inch stroke is, um, is doable. So you can come in with some pretty big displacements. So um, got them upside down. Uh, first thing you notice is four bolt mains on the middle three. Uh, the outer bolts are splayed. The caps are uh, billet steel. Um, and the cylinders have been lowered a little bit so that the skirts of the cylinders go down pretty far uh, for extra stability at, at, at bottom dead center. Um, I've already got our steel cam plate in here uh, because we're running a billet steel cam core. One thing I like about the dart blocks is the gallery plugs are um, O-ringed, so they're not pipe plugs. It makes it really nice. Um, all these blocks have provisions for dowels for the timing cover. Um, got our cam in, got our coated main bearings. I'm getting ready to um, uh, I'll have the crank back Monday after balancing and I can start checking bearing clearances. But you can see here, um, we deburred the bottoms of the cylinders, nice and smooth. You want to do that on any build at all. Uh, it doesn't matter the engine family or, or whatever, even on other uh, brands, Ford, Chevrolet, Mopar, you want to do that. Um, Priority main oiling, as um, all small block Fords have. And uh, let me turn this one upside down and we'll show you the top end. All right, so this is the top end and uh, rather big bores, you can see that. And we got some extra cylinder um, thicknesses around the cylinder. That's why everything's bulged out here. Um, one good thing about the dart block is this is a screw-in plug. It's not a cut plug that can pop out. So it's a half inch pipe. <clears throat> um, lifter bores are finished and we have the two mounting points for uh, the lifter spider. Um, on the front, again, you can see uh, the O-ring plugs, You've got one here. Got two here, got one behind the distributor. So really nice to, to push in there. You don't have to mess with cut plugs. You don't have to drill and tap for um, pipe plugs. And you don't have to use any sealant on the ones on the outsides uh, because on the rear of the block, it's like this. So you don't have to mess with thread sealant or anything like that. The O-ring seals it. All right, so this is Mr. Mark's uh, build. We're doing a small block four tunnel pour for him and we're just waiting on, uh, we've been waiting a long time on this one because it requires a lot of custom parts. I'm waiting on valve guides right now that have been in the works for two or three weeks. Um, and we're just keep waiting on those and eventually we'll get them and it can build the heads. But this is a world products block. Uh, the world products blocks are by default, four bolt main caps on all five caps. So billet steel caps, and then four bolt on each one. The middle three are splayed. Um, 
So you can get the dart block like that. You can get an iron eagle block and they have four bolt caps on the ends. But the SHP from dart is so strong that uh, it would be hard pressed to want to spend the extra money on it. Um, let's see what else can we show. Oh, this one's already got the cam in it as well. It's not a roller, it's a billet steel flat tappet. We've got a steel cam thrust plate and the pipe plugs are pipe plugs. They're not O-ringed or anything like that. So you have to use sealant on the back and um, oil on the ones that are internal. The cylinders are much, much, much longer than the dart block. That creates some problems sometimes on clearancing. Um, you can look back through my videos and see where we did uh, the big displacement cleaver engine which we would use the world products block and we had to grind on everything to get things to clear um, calico coated main bearings in this one as well and uh, i'm going to flip this one over and we can look at the top end of it all right so minor differences in the way that these blocks oil um, if you notice if you look in here you will see that there's no pipe plug that ends at the end of that lifter gallery. Um, not sure why they chose to not have a clean out there, but since you can get to the lifter bores from the top, it's not really a big deal. Both of these blocks have provisions for oiling from the rear. So if you're running a dry sump, you can introduce oil to the rear of the block first instead of the front. Um, the biggest difference on the World Products blocks no lifter crossover right here so you don't have the same pipe plug as you have on the dart or on factory blocks so the lifter swap the oiling to the lifters in the back is is different um no rear lifter valley drain so this is a a drain right here but it kind of deadheads unless you can hook some kind of a scavenge line up to it, which is really tricky because here's where the scavenge line hooks up, which is underneath your cylinder head. So in, in different applications, this may be usable, but in, in our application, it will not be. Um, you do have the lifter valley drains right here. Um, if you're scavenging from the lifter valley, then you can block those and keep the oil from uh, draining down on the cam and on the crankshaft. Um, I haven't looked at our combination yet. I went ahead and tapped these just in case, but um, if this was a single carbureted intake, we could drill and use a, this is a dry sump motor. So if this was a single carburetor intake, we could drill through the intake manifold and scavenge uh, with a little pipe at the rear. I haven't looked at our combination yet, so we'll have to think through that a little bit more. Um, the cylinder walls are thick, as are the darts. You, what you'll notice is these outside bolt holes. So this is so you can have extra clamping force on your cylinder heads. I think a uh, profiler made a head that would utilize these outer bolts as well as world products i haven't really seen a lot of those combinations yet um so with the typical ford you use the 10 bolt holes uh, i'm going to spin this around real quick so you can see the rear and we'll talk about how the oiling goes all right so um here is your main oil gallery so it's in the same location as the dart block or a factory block the oil then comes up through this passage here and it shoots over and snags both of your lifter galleries. If you notice, we've got blue anodized plugs. Those are not really plugs, they're restrictors. So our World Products Block uses a, um, it's kind of a long O-ringed restrictor that screws in to each lifter gallery and it will limit the amount of oil going to the lifter bores. All right, we've got our World Products Block upside down again. Just wanted to show this area right here, I had to grind to clear our rod bolt. This is how close it gets to the oil pump flange. But um, 
this was a dry sump engine so you can tell here i've got the the, the adapter to plumb oil into it and this will be just blocked off it'll be dead and dry anyway all right so that is a quick rundown on these two blocks both are um i would not shy away from putting a thousand horsepower through this dart shp block and this one will obviously take uh, probably a lot more than that uh, it's just a lot stronger in the mains but uh, the shp blocks are just really a good bang for your buck and uh, again really we're really strong really stout um, the four bolt end caps require a special oil pan so keep that in mind if you have your eye on one of these um, it, it really interferes with a, a stock factory style oil pan flange back there all right guys hope that helps out a little bit and um, just a little bit of extra information for you talk to you guys soon if you haven't subscribed to the channel please do that so that you don't miss out on any more uh forward information and i uh, hope you're having a good week and i'll talk to you soon